Hello everyone, welcome to Analog IAS Current Affair Analysis for 31st of October 2020. In this video, we'll be looking at a couple of issues. The first one is about urban flooding and how cities should be sustainable to withstand the fury of nature in the future. The second one is, what is the new facet of globalization and what is the way in which we have to nurture this idea of globalization in the post-COVID world? The first article for the day is taken from the Hindu and it is titled Time for Spawn Cities Mission in India. In 2015, we have seen the Chennai flood. In 2018, it was the Kerala flood. And in 2020, it is Hyderabad. The common theme amongst the floods that have uh, actually engulfed this entire cities is uh, the fact that the lakes and wetlands in this region have been completely blocked by urban constructions so this unsustainable way of blocking the uh, pathways of water bodies has actually led to the present crisis which we are witnessing today in various cities going forward there are scientific studies which said that the monsoon pattern has significantly altered so we'll be having a huge volume of uh, rainfall in a very short span of time so the time stretch of the water that we get from rainfall is equally important to manage this flooding situation so it is a fact that the monsoon season has been more than abundant or more than normal in the past couple of years and it is because of this reason hyderabad was not in a position to adapt to the changed situation of this high volume therefore the drains of the city were clogged the uh, lakes and other wetlands in the region were uh, brimming at full capacity and where there was no place to go they have actually occupied the streets of the city where uh, previously the catchment areas of these lakes and wetlands were present so when uh, buildings occupy that catchment area what happens is this urban flooding so this brings us to the fact that just like how a sponge absorbs the excess water we need conservation of our water bodies in our area the cities that contributed so much to the humanity are now facing an unprecedented crisis take for example in cape town a couple of years ago there was a complete water crisis and on the other end of the spectrum is jakarta which is actually submerging due to climate change jakarta is one of the low-lying regions of this world and climate change is already making harsh impacts on various cities. So as the urban population around the world is skyrocketing, cities also have an important share of responsibility towards handling this climate change. So all the patterns that we see today are mainly because of anthropogenic activities. In order to mitigate this risk, urban planners and policy makers are suggesting the idea of a sponge city mission now what exactly is the sponge city mission basically when we are talking about sponge cities we mean a kind of an ecosystem where urban centers actually take advantage of floods rather than being a victim in the SDGs there are 17 goals and one of the important goal is building sustainable uh, communities and cities so this sustainable cities is important to the urban agenda given the fact that 50% of the population by 2050 will reside in cities. So what we have to do is focus on those elements which are considered to be sustainable. Like for example, green roof is one such example. So what is this green roof? Growing open green spaces uh, in our apartments and ensuring that they are interconnected uh, to the water recycling systems is one perfect example of ensuring that uh, sustainable use of resources is happening in urban centers. So with respect to urban planning, we have a couple of schemes called Amrit and Hride. So we have to envisage this sustainable planning and take into consideration the uh, urban design which works in tandem with the nature rather than against it. So there is no single formula to create one. 
it all depends on the geography and the available space so this is where policy making and uh, urban planners come into the picture so we need urban planning as envisaged in the 73rd and 74th uh, constitutional amendment act through our uh, empowerment of local governments so this spawn city actually follows the philosophy of innovation where uh, a city can solve water problems uh, for example today we have had areas where there is uh, excess of water because of the lakes and other water bodies crossing the threshold that they can bear so in order to tap into these uh, catchment areas and uh, utilize this water we need urban planning in such a way that uh, this water is utilized locally so they should not be encroached upon that urban planning aspect requires scientific approach which is lacking right now one of the important aspect of uh, this pawn city's mission is infrastructure planning now green infra can also be created by natural means so we have something called bios walls for example bios walls say for example this is a road on either side of it traffic will be moving and this is the footpath or the divider so in the space enclosed here what we can do is we can grow plants in this region so that it retains a lot of water and thereby the potential to absorb water in these areas will be greatly enhanced so this acts as a natural uh, barrier for flooding as well and therefore we have to adopt this uh, natural infrastructure to support the city ecosystem unless and until we adopt this uh, principle of sustainability in our urban planning this scenario is going to be repeated year after year therefore we have to quickly take this issue up and uh, ensure that the results are uh, seen with proper actions that is the gist of this article the second article is taken from a newspaper called first post and this is a important article because it basically talks about two important ideas so this uh, is a very small article so please concentrate so when we are talking about globalization what is it characterized by we have uh, no barriers for trade for movement there are no tariff barriers as well so india always en envisages a world wherein we treat everyone as a family member so thereby uh, the principle that india incorporates about its vision towards the world is vasudeva kutumbakam so globalization in the indian context can be summed up through this phrase vasudeva kutumbakam wherein the entire globe is a family globalization has actually helped address the issue of poverty in a lot of uh, countries so one of the major uh, criticism with respect to globalization especially in, in the indian context say for example in the 1991 um, lpg reforms there is a criticism that it led to inequality the reason why it led to inequality is not because of globalization but because of lack of proper channels uh, that were uh, absent to redistribute the fruits of this globalization with globalization we have found new markets there is cultural exchange there is uh, increase in the visibility for example a movie like bahubali would not have raked in so much money in the international markets had it not been for globalization so there are definitely good aspects of globalization what is the downside if you take the example of 2012 nirbhaya rape case there were lot of commentaries uh, which try to understand the sociological aspect of the mindset of the rapist so a conclusive evidence was that the benefits of uh, globalization were not actually reaped by the people living in that greater noida and ncr region previously the companies uh, which own the land right now uh, that land belonged to farmers residing in that area since they did not have any other uh, source of uh, occupation or revenue after that land was uh, taken away from them they were uh, forced to marginalize jobs and which led to their changed mindset 
so they always perceive themselves as a victim of this aspect of uh, globalization so the first priority should be to move towards a commons oriented system to address the system of inequality the biggest threats right now are climate change and biodiversity so who is going to bear the brunt of this uh, burden it is again the poor so we have to make sure that the model of globalization is focusing on the poor and the biggest threats of climate change and biodiversity are addressed making these people stakeholders in every decision so that is the first theme the second theme is about the engagement and the rules of uh, the global geopolitics when we're talking about engagement at institutional level we are seeing a phenomenon called retreat of multilateralism what do you mean by this a lot of countries because of the stagnation that they have witnessed in the growth because there is a change in the phase of technology every country has almost achieved that level of technology which can uh, push forward its basic minimum needs for example take the example of bangladesh previously bangladesh used to import a lot of its goods even the petty goods but bangladesh has uh, increased its self sufficiency and it is producing it for its domestic markets so this phase where every country hits a saturation what happens is there will be unemployment because of the bulging population and the governments are not in a position to create number of jobs for them similarly this is the case in india also but the advantage for india is we also have a huge market so in this scenario due to the competition for jobs the rhetoric of politicians is such a way that it is targeting uh, another country and uh, blaming the another country for the misery in its own economy for example this is the trend followed by us by blaming china of uh, checkbook diplomacy and uh, dumping cheap quality goods into various economies and thereby enriching its own economy so the entire rhetoric around which this election of 2016 in america was based on was because of this uh, backlash against globalization against migrants who were supposedly stealing the jobs of the locals so this pattern is visible across europe and entire uh, globe at this point of time especially with the covid pandemic and the backlash against china it has only accentuated so what we have to focus right now is to get back that rules based mechanism to ensure that this fruits of globalization are actually addressing the uh, issue of inequality in the world the only answer for uh, poverty is collective action through globalization we cannot take globalization for granted we have to find ways to make it work that is the gist of this article